Welcome to our Bible study for this week. We are continuing in the book of Philippians, a very, very familiar passage, Philippians 1, uh, or excuse me, 2, verses 1 through 13. Now, before we get to the scripture, let me remind you, you may remember a number of years ago, uh, Gatorade had commercials that featured basketball player Michael Jordan. And the whole point of their commercials were, be like Mike. And what they really were saying was, drink Gatorade because Mike drinks Gatorade. But the truth of the matter is, they were kind of trying to suggest that if you drink Gatorade, maybe you might become the greatest basketball player of all time. Now, when those were coming out, I think I was probably in high school. Uh, I played on our church uh, league uh, a basketball team, but usually rode the bench even on the church league basketball team. Uh, we did have a basket out in the, in the backyard of our house, a dirt uh, or grass court and a basketball basket, and I would spend lots and lots of times out there practicing, but I can tell you, I could have spent 10 hours a day, seven days a week practicing out there, and I was never going to really be like Mike. I didn't have the body for it, I didn't have the uh, sports ability uh, for it, there was no way that I was ever really going to be like Mike. That was absolutely impossible. Well, today's scripture asks us to do something that's even more challenging, maybe even seemingly more impossible, and that is to be like Christ. Paul encourages us to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. And so to prepare for our study, let us first hear this passage. And again, it's Philippians from the second chapter. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the Spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So be like Christ. No problem, right? We can just practice and practice and practice and, and sooner or later we will be just like Christ. We'll get it, right? Well, obviously not. It really doesn't matter how much I practice. I'm never going to actually be uh, like Christ. There's actually literally, I would say, a better chance of me making the NBA uh, like Mike uh, than there is for me to actually be like Christ if I depend completely on me, on my practice, on my skills, on whatever. Uh, so what are we to do? Just ignore this passage and see it as uh, Paul being uh, uh, setting the bar too high or something? No, I don't think so at all. I think we go back to the beginning and we listen to what Paul is saying. And Paul begins his chapter with a bunch of if statements. If there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation from love, if there is sharing in the Spirit, if there is compassion and sympathy. And that sounds pretty conditional. It sounds like, well, if you have encouragement, if you have uh, uh, the, the uh, consolation of love, if you have a sharing, if you have sympathy and compassion, then maybe you can be like Christ. And we might say, well, I might have a little bit of those things, but I really can't have as many of those things and in the ways that Christ did. And that's because we're still keeping it in this idea that I have to do it for myself. 
but actually the way the sentence is constructed in Greek, it's saying something very differently, and, and the English doesn't quite pick it up. Uh, the best I can, can uh, think to, to describe it is uh, if, if you say something to me, ask me a question, and the answer is just obviously yes, and I say, well, is the Pope Catholic? Or if I, or I say, uh, does a bear poop in the woods? Uh, if I say those kind of things to you, I'm not actually asking you those questions. Yes, of course, the Pope is a, is a, uh, a Catholic. Uh, yes, of course, whatever it is that you just said to me, whatever you ask is the case. That's what Paul is doing here. I, I read recently uh, this, this week that someone says that maybe we should use the word since and that would help us a little better. Since there is encouragement from Christ, since there is consolation from love, since there is a sharing in the Spirit, since there is compassion and uh, sympathy, I want you to have the mind of Christ. Not because uh, you have to generate on your, on your own, but because those gifts are already there for you. Now, what difference does that little change make? Well, it really makes all the change in the world. Because if I want to be like Mike, I'm basically all on my own and I'm going to fail. But if I want to have the mind of Christ, if I want to be like Christ, then I do have all of those blessings that Paul has just just said, uh, uh, just told us about. I have encouragement in Christ. I want you to think for a moment about uh, your favorite hymn or several of your favorite hymns. I want to slot these in to all four of these. So when I think about having encouragement in Christ, one of the things I think about is the hymn, He Lives. I serve a living Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever folk may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. I am reminded, I'm encouraged that I am encouraged in Christ because Christ is living in me and through me and is with me each and every day. Christ isn't a teacher from the past who is now gone and dead and moldering in some grave and I can learn from the teaching uh, but can't experience the teacher. No, he is right there with me in the world today, uh, right here and now, giving me whatever I need. And that is part of what encouragement in Christ means for me. Uh, think for a moment what but a hymn for you that was encouragement in Christ might be. And then we have the next phrase is, since we have consolation from love. And I thought about uh, one of my favorite hymns, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Underneath me, all around me, is the current of thy love, leading onward, leading homeward, to thy glorious rest above. What is the consolation of love? It is as if I'm swimming in the love of Christ, and the current is just bearing me along. I don't have to do it. Christ is doing it in me and through me. When you think of consolation of love, what is a hymn perhaps that you think of? The next phrase is sharing in the Spirit. And of course, the, the uh, obvious implication here is the Holy Spirit that is with us. And uh, one of the, the uh, hymns that I think about is Breathe on me, breath of life. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breathe into me, Holy Spirit. And Spirit is... Uh, is breath. It's the same word, actually, uh, in, in Greek. Uh, in spirit, inspire. Uh, when, we, when, when we take in breath, inspire. Uh, uh, all of that is, is the spirit. So breathe on me, breath of God. I uh, have the spirit. But I don't merely have the spirit. I share in the spirit so that I would do what you would do, so that I can share your spirit with others. What would be a hymn that uh, you might uh, think about that, that was a favorite hymn of yours that would remind you uh, to share in the Spirit? And then the next clause and the last clause that Paul uses is that we have compassion and sympathy. We, we are given compassion and sympathy. We experience compassion and sympathy. Uh, and, and when I think of a friend who is compassionate or sympathetic or empathetic to me, I think of just how close I am to them and how much I appreciate being around them. And that kind of led me to the, the hymn, In the Garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. 
and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. This idea of Christ giving to me compassion and sympathy and empathy and then allowing me then to be able to reach out to others in compassion and empathy and sympathy as well. And so if I'm going to accept all of those gifts that aren't if gifts, if I have them, but since I have them, I have access to them, then I'm going to be able to imperfectly have the mind of Christ. I'm going to be able to do those things that Paul says, don't look after your own interests, but to the interests of others. And in great humility, consider others better than yourselves. And that is a gigantic ask. Uh, in a sense, and yet Paul immediately then rolls into why would we look to the interests of others rather than ourselves? Why would we act in, as, in a way as if others were, were more important than we were? Because that is exactly what the mind of Christ is all about. Who, Though he counted equality with God as something to be grasped, Christ emptied himself, became humble and obedient, even obedient to the cross, even obedient unto death. And we are called to do the same. Now, I used hymns a moment ago for a, a very real reason. I wanted you to be thinking about hymns. Hymns can, can take us deeper than just uh, merely saying some kind of word. As if I say to you, God's grace is there for you, or I have experienced God's grace in wonderful ways, uh, that's good. If I can tell you a story, that may bring it uh, even a little closer home to you. But if I say to you, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Uh, that probably just pulls you into a much deeper spot because you know that beautiful hymn and you know those words. And if you know the story behind that hymn, uh, it brings it even even better, even deeper. Uh, but it hits us on a deep, deep level. Music does that for us. And when we hear the music, even if we're not hearing someone sing, we hear those words flowing through not only our minds, but really through our entire lives and they change us. And a reason that, that I'm doing all that is because as you well may know, well, once you hit... Uh, the uh, uh, get get through the first part, and, and Paul calls us to to get in to have the mind of Christ. He then begins quoting what was almost certainly a hymn, a hymn that the Philippians would have known, a favorite hymn that they would have sung maybe almost every single week. Uh, he says, "Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus." And then you can imagine the music almost starting as he starts as he quotes this hymn, and they hear the music and they're singing along with him as this is being read to them. Who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, I'd love to know the tune that they sang that to back in Philippi, uh, but we don't know what tune it was. And, and the English makes it really hard to set to music. And trust me, I, I know. I've gone and looked. I was hoping maybe I could find something uh, that we could listen to together to, to kind of bring it back to us, but that I couldn't find anything that I felt really worked well. And it's because this is uh, translated out of the Greek, and so it works better, obviously, as a Greek hymn than it does as an English hymn. And so instead of, of hearing it or singing it, uh, let's live it. Let's recognize that because we have encouragement in Christ, consolation from love, sharing in the Spirit, compassion and sympathy, we can be like Christ, we can have the mind of Christ, and we can be imperfectly, of course, but nevertheless, we can be what God wants us to be. And we can do all of those things because of just what Paul is telling us. Because God, through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, is with us. Amen.